Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's event, Store Simple, Microsoft Azure Store Simple for Higher Tier Workloads in Education. My name is Robin, and I'll assist you in getting this session started. Let's go over a few things. First, please click on the Messages button at the bottom left of your screen to view the Messages panel. You can see that I've put some notes in there for your reference. I'd like to encourage you to participate in today's session by using this Messages panel at any time to ask questions or provide comments. Simply type in the white box and click Send. If you experience any technical difficulties, please first refresh your browser by clicking on the, the circular arrow button up in the address bar or by clicking on Control F5 on your keyboard. If this doesn't resolve your issue, please send me a message via the Messages button and I'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to resolve the issue. Please note that this session is being recorded on behalf of the Dynetech Corporation. If you don't consent to being part of a recorded session, please disconnect your line at this time. Now I'd like to hand things over to your first presenter, Sheila Varadon, Azure Solutions Specialist. Sheila, you now have the floor. Thank you, Robin. Hi, everyone. This is Sheila Varadon from Microsoft. Like Robin mentioned, I am an Azure Solutions Specialist at Microsoft, and I cover both K-12 and higher education. On the phone, we also have members from Dynetech, who is a Microsoft Gold National Solutions Provider, who also offers a wide variety of options to support our Microsoft platforms. And now, I'll pass it off to Steve Sanchez, who is the Director of Sales and the National Alliance Director. Steve, want to kick the webinar off? Thanks, Sheila. Appreciate that. Uh, first, thanks, everybody, for, for joining us today. This is, uh, this is a great conversation to have. Um, and, and we're excited to have with us uh, uh, John Scaris, who's one of our one of our senior architects. Just a quick review of the of the agenda. Um, you know, we're 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 going to cover some of the store simple capabilities uh, for you guys today. We're going to talk about where Dynetech fits fits in the education and the Microsoft ecosystem, and then John's going to cover some great uh, traditional storage challenges. What the Microsoft Hybrid Cloud storage benefits are. And then what's new in the uh, in the Store Simple 8000 series? And and Store Simple is a great you know it's an it's, it's an exciting conversation to have with customers when you start thinking about cloud premise and cloud capability. You know it's a, it's a real great complete enterprise hybrid cloud storage solution that gives you lots of flexibility and lots of capabilities. And and uh, I don't think there's enough knowledge about it in the marketplace. And when you hear about it, I think it's an exciting opportunity for you to begin to take advantage of looking at your at rest. Um, or your or your st or your storage that needs to be um, tiered into uh, into different places. It gives, really gives you the capability of being able to do that. So let me tell you a little bit about about uh, Dynetech and who we are. We're you know we're a national company. Uh, we are one of the 38 national solution providers for the in, within the Microsoft ecosystem. We're a, we're a uh, um, a practice led organization. Microsoft is one of our our practices. It's probably our largest professional services practice. We also have a large infrastructure solutions practice, an endpoint computing practice, and a uh, staffing training and, cons and consulting, uh, both uh, both for on-site managed services as well as remote managed services from a consultative perspective as well. Um, so much different than your legacy Microsoft uh, partners, we really have a very broad depth and, and knowledge within both the Microsoft ecosystem as well as everything within the data center requirements. It's really one of the key differentiators that Dynetech brings to the table, um, especially when we start talking about things like storage. Um, this is a space that we've spent a lot of time in. We understand the legacy storage requirements for lots of our customers, and we've seen a lot of our customers making that that decision about full cloud, hybrid cloud. You know, there, there's a lot of conversations around that, so we really understand the the underpinnings, so to speak, of the hardware requirements and the data center requirements, as well as the business requirements, um, and some of the struggles that customers have gone through from, you know, being able to deal with the, uh, so to speak, cultural change within the way they deal with uh, with storage. Um, who is uh, who is Dynetech within the, the Microsoft uh, ecosystem? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dynetech is a national solution provider for. For Microsoft, uh, one of the 38 largest partners from a Microsoft uh, perspective, we are a CSP Tier 1 authorized reseller. So that means for certain kinds of customers, unfortunately, education isn't one of those right now. Although I understand they're on the on the roadmap, uh, we are able to sell the licensing, cloud-based licensing, so Azure EMS. Uh, Office 365, and then bundle that with uh, managed services solution that we provide um, for post implementation support around moves, ads, and changes 
Um, we've got a great solution that we call the cloud, cloud concierge solution that we bundle around that. We're also a Microsoft authorized devices reseller. Lots of interest, especially in the education space around the authorized, around the devices from the Surface platform for, for Microsoft um, and a lot of really uh, hot interest in the education, especially in the K through 12, but even, even more impressed I am with the interest that's coming out for the Surface Hub in the higher education space because of the Surface Hub's capabilities of the collaboration, um, the unique capabilities around collaboration that it brings to customers. If you're not familiar with the Surface Hub, um, either hit us up after the after the uh, after the webinar today, or check it out online. Um, it's a it's a fairly new release, but I, I will tell you, in the education space, those customers who are aware of it seem to have really understood it very quickly, and I think it's going to make a big wave of change for education customers. We are uh, we are a managed partner in all of the regions in which we call home. So the Southwest, the Northeast, the Midwest. Um, uh, the, we are managed both nationally as a partner, and then we're also managed within the verticals nationally, so we are an education nationally managed partner, as well as a state and local government healthcare managed, nationally managed partner. And uh, particularly important to this particular presentation and the group of people from the education institutions that are on today, we were the Microsoft Public Sector's uh, education worldwide education partner of the year in 2013. It's a great honor. Um, that we, we still like to tout and make sure that customers understand it's a key differentiator for us. We were chosen as a partner of the year for Microsoft amongst, you know, 30,000 plus partners that circle the globe. They chose us as their partner of the year in the public sector education space. As you can see there on the slide, we also have several of the uh, Microsoft competencies. Um, we, we, it's important to understand that we are leading the charge, so to speak, both with Microsoft and for ourselves. In the, in the cloud area, you'll notice that the majority of our gold competencies um, circle that cloud space, so cloud platform and cloud productivity, as well as golden communications, which covers some of the cloud space as well. And then we do have that gold data center as well. I mentioned earlier about some of our capabilities in the data center, and, and we really have been, we've grown up in that space, so we understand it very well. Um, And just, uh, I'll kind of finish off here to give you, I mentioned earlier about some of the unique capabilities that DynTech brings to the table when it comes to some of the other things that we do outside of the Microsoft space that really augment what we do with Microsoft. And they don't really, there's no real competitive basis of the way that we do our business here. Really, Microsoft is who we lead with, they're who we go through the, the door with. But at the end of the day, our experience in the other areas with partners like EMC and Cisco and Citrix and VMware and uh, several others really give us that capability of understanding these underpinnings that happen within customers' environments and give us a unique insight into how the, in, the interconnected inner workings of your environment really kind of depend on some of the knowledge that we have for us to be able to assist you guys in making the decisions around this. And later on in the, in the, uh, in the presentation, we'll talk about an offering we have around an assessment that we're going to discuss with you. Um, and, that, and that assessment really is, that business case use assessment is really born out of the knowledge that we have in, in this wide range of areas that we have expertise in. So with, with, without further ado, I'll turn it over to John Scarice. Um, John, if you want to take the helm, so to speak, um, I'm, I'm happy to turn it over to you and uh, I'll be back with you guys towards the end. Thanks so much, John. Okay, hey everyone. Um, happy Wednesday and thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, uh, we're going to start talking about traditional storage challenges and when we talk about storage, uh, well, you know, some people get sensitive to it because it really depends on who you are. If you're an engineer and you're looking at uh, your SAN devices and, and storage in general in your data center and you're looking at capacity, you may be going to your IT director going, hey, we need more space. Um, and that IT director, when uh, you say we need more space, well, they're looking at capital expenditures and going up top and saying, hey, we, you know, we have to spend more money because we're running out of space. So it becomes a sensitive topic to a lot of people. And if we were all sitting in a room right now and uh, I was looking at your faces, uh, I'd ask you what you think your growth is going to be this year. Um, you know, if I say, is it going to be 20 percent, probably a lot of you would put your hands up. Uh, a lot of you may be shaking your head going, no, we don't grow that much. And, and But when you get to the end of the year and you take a look at things, you know, the added applications, the um, 
the other platforms that you're putting in, you may put in SharePoint, you may be putting in uh, an archive solution, uh, you may be upgrading your email environment. So the next thing you know, you're at 20 or 30 percent uh, growth. Um, and when you look at, even if you're 20 percent growth, when you look at it in five years, you're doubling your growth rate. So when we're when we look at a five-year capital expenditure, uh, spending money every five years and doubling the space. Um, it can get costly. So it's not going to get just costly with uh, buying hardware. It's also going to get costly with, you know, the footprint in your data center, um, the cost of keeping this equipment up. And for you who are responsible for it, um, the administration portion is, um, you know, it's going to increase as well. So you're going to have to spend more of your time managing and monitoring. Uh, and you may even look at, you know, monitoring software, et cetera, but that's just adding more and more to your costs. And, and let's not forget licensing as well. Uh, licensing is going to add to it. So when we look at the cost of storage and the, especially the infrastructure sprawl, you're looking at, you know, 40 percent, uh, you know, 20 to 40 percent year after year, and that can become very expensive. Um, so... All these areas overlap when it comes to the data center and your applications. Um, so it's a never-ending problem. Um, and, you know, when you look at it, it's going to get more and more complex because you may have, you know, different uh, hardware platforms. When it comes to, um, you know, your SAN devices, you may have SSD, you may have H, uh, HDD, you may have SATA, you may have, uh, you know, different types of um, uh, connectivity uh platforms uh, to your servers, you may have a virtual environment. So, you know, the more you're adding to it, the more complex it's going to get. Um, I don't know if a lot of you are still doing tape backups. Um, if you are, <laughs> you may have run into some issues with tape. Um, and if you are you're running tape, you probably remember the grandfather, father, son. Uh, if you're old enough to uh, to remember that. But, you know, if you're if you're moving away from tape and gone to some T-dupe um, technologies, then um, it, it, those can become more and more complex as well. And the higher the complexity, the higher risk of data recovery. Um, and, you know, again, if we were sitting in a room right now and I asked how many of you have a disaster recovery plan, probably a lot of you don't have one. And we find that a lot, even with some of the larger companies, um, in education, it's, you know, it's hard to have that DR plan um, and, you know, update it and be on top of it every year. So even if you have something written down on a piece of paper, you're probably ahead of the game. So being in education and looking at the complexities of your data center and, and how you have to uh, support everyone, um, you're probably in a position where there's not a lot of IT support as well. Um, and that's kind of standard IT uh, teams are now as thin as possible. So that increases the risk as well. So when we look at the overall cost of, you know, increasing storage, um, especially in education, it's incredibly difficult. Um, so we want to basically keep things less complex and um, less expensive if we can. So I like this slide because um, when we look at storage today, this is what happens to all of us. So you start off with some primary storage, and then you look at it and say, you know, we're not using a lot of what's there. It's just, um, you know, we have expensive disk uh, data sitting on expensive disk. So we now we've got to put in an archival solution. Um, now you've got an archive solution that you have to manage, and it's not so expensive, but you know what? Um, we want to get away from tape backup or we want to add to our DR plan and say we want to do this to this to tape. So now we're putting in a SATA array or something in its equivalent. Uh, and because you're now completely a uh, virtual environment or mostly virtual, you want to have some type of remote replication of your VMs to another location. And if you have multiple schools, obviously you can have multiple data centers. And you're still doing tape backup maybe. Off-site, so you're doing disk to disk, and then you have your tape off-site. So all these things you've got to manage, all these areas you've got to 
you got to pay for. Um, so when you look at Store Simple, the best way to, to look at it is uh, from one of the user's point of view, really. So if you're a user, you're sitting there and you're using your computer and you're saving your data and saving your email. So where is it going? Well, traditionally, it would go to your primary storage. Um, with a Store Simple, um, and we'll see it on the next slide in relation to how it's it's um, it's using SSD and HDD and compression. But the best way to look at it is that Store Simple is smart enough to be um, used for primary storage. Um, so that that piece of data that we are actually using um, gets onto your Store Simple device. Uh, what happens is is that because you're using it today, it's staying in a more active area of Store Simple. And yeah, Store Simple is a hardware device, but it's smart enough, just like some of your SAN devices that you're actually buying today. It's smart enough to be able to move uh, data that's active in one area and data that's cold and put it in another area. Um, but the big difference is, is that it's actually replacing a lot of these different solutions for you uh, in one device. And on top of that, it's using cloud solution, uh, integrated cloud in Azure, um, for a lot of the cold data, and I'll get into how it actually works. That's kind of the, 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 the great part about all this is actually how it actually moves data around. And the way that it moves data around is where you're actually saving money. So if you're a user again and you're saving your data, you're saving your file, the file goes into an active area of, of your primary storage if you don't have Store Simple. Um, if you do, then it goes into an active area of Store Simple. Now, after a few days or weeks, you're not using that data anymore, so it moves into a non-active or a cold area. And as time goes by, if you're still not using it, in your standard storage uh, configuration, it would go into an archive area or it would go into one of your disk-based backup areas. Well, here, Store Simple can send it up to the cloud. So you can already see um, that some a lot of these areas are not you know you don't you need them anymore and you don't the the, the complexity and the expense of them um, is reduced tremendously uh, tremendously when that data goes to the cloud. So you can manage your data growth by having active and cold areas locally, and then also manage by moving a lot of the cold areas up to the cloud. Uh, and this is more of an archival um, configuration for you. Um, so the question is, is you're probably saying, okay, what happens to the data when it's up in the cloud? That file now that I used a month ago, I want to pull it back in. What happens is the file that now is up in the cloud gets pulled back into your store simple device and goes back into an active area. So um, that's the wonderful part about it. So now that file is back into that active area, it's going to stay in that active area where you're using it, and then it goes back down the, the line as it's not used. Eventually, it'll get into the cold area, and then archive back up if you want to look at it that way into the cloud. So you can see that a lot of the standard storage devices that you have are no longer required. So that disk backup, you don't need as much. The archival backup can be removed as well. And, and, you know, the remote replication area for your VMs, we'll talk about that as well uh, in one of the other slides, but that gets replaced by another store simple device as well. So by using the cloud in relation to a physical device locally, which you're going to have anyway, you're saving a lot of money. So you're lowering your storage costs. Um, you're simplifying your data protection and disaster recovery. And you're doing that by minimizing the amount of technology that you're using. So, you know, I'm not using, you know, five different uh, types of technology to actually move my data around. I'm only using one or two. Um, and that makes things less, less complex for you and uh, easier to manage. So you're increasing your business agility by doing this as well because you're, you know, you're reducing the risk of your, um, your data recovery. Um, and by lowering costs, it gives you more options for, you know, other areas of growth. So when we look at overall storage costs, and this is the CapEx, OpEx um, discussion that you're going to have probably with, with your IT director or upper management, but we're finding reduced storage costs by 40 to 60%. 
Um, it really depends on, you know, the size of your data center and how much you've invested in storage. But um, on average, that's what we're seeing in relation to saving money. And it, and it kind of makes sense because if you're removing, if I'm removing archival storage and disk backup, um, then I'm saving probably about 30, 35% right there in relation to it. So it really depends on the size of, of, uh, of your environment. So let's go to the next slide. I really like this slide because now you can kind of get a visual of what happens. Um, so within the store simple box itself, you can see you've got SSD, HDD, and you can see cloud. So really you have two layers of SSD in the box. Now let me get over to my notes here. So you've got two layers of SSD. Um, the second layer is a dedupe layer, so all your active data goes into the first SSD layer. It gets deduped into the second SSD layer. So as you're using um, these active files, they're going in between these two layers, and as they get cold and not being used, they get into the HDD layer. That HDD layer is uh, compressed, so you have full compression in, in your HDD layer, um, and that data will sit there um, cold. Uh, until it gets into a, um, and, you, and you're setting the policies, we'll take a look at that later as well, but you're setting the policies in relation to how long that you're holding this data and how you're backing it up. So at some point when this data gets very inactive, let's say 30 days, it gets sent up to the cloud. So it, it, when you look at data in this, in this sense, every single day when you look at your storage, users are probably going to be using about 10% of, you know, and I'm actually being conservative there, probably about 10% of your storage is active data. So, you know, 80 to 90% isn't. So if you look at it over another 30 days, you may end up adding another 10 or 15%. So 70% um, to 85% of that data is gonna be cold. So now you can look at it and say, okay, well, where do I want that data to sit? And traditionally, you would be archiving that data. In this sense, you're using the cloud. So now you're moving data off of your um, HDD portion and moving it into the cloud. So the nice part about this, um, the, this slide is that it's really showing you the percentages or at least the ratios of where data is gonna be. So now you're saving space on not only your SSD portion, but you're also HDD portion, your hard drives are, compressed, a lot of that data goes up into the cloud. And again, when you're ready to bring that data back down and use it, it goes back into that active SSD layer. And then and it goes through uh, the policies and, and, and configurations that you have within StoreSimple to move that data back into the cloud. So the unstructured data year after year, that 40% growth, that a lot of that can go up into the cloud. And now you're saving on capital expenditures there. Um, the work data set stays fairly constant, so that active area stays active. If you're constantly using data, it's going to sit in that SSD area and get deduped into the second SSD layer. Um, if you're using it every now and then, it's going to go from cold to hot, if you want to look at it that way. So it'll stay on-prem, and you're able to access that data very quickly. You've got hybrid storage, um, array performance for working sets. Um, and then we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. It's one of the other slides, but you have the ability to have, um, you know, uh, hybrid VMs replicated into the cloud, moving back and forth. Um, and then all the inactive data is tiered into the cloud. So that fits your uh, archiving, your, um, your uh, disk to disk to tape type uh, backup and, and DR. So it's, that's, that's where it's really saving you money. So it's enterprise, enterprise, uh, sorry, Store Simple provides enter, enterprise storage with cloud um, economies of scale. So it's, um, it's someone was really thinking when this came out. I remember when I first looked at the product, I'm like, okay, what's it really replacing? But it's really replacing a lot and it works really well. Uh, so let me go to the next slide here. So when we're talking about application workloads, you really have a lot of options here. You know, in the traditional model, all your application workloads are local, um, and they're either going they're going in between the different SAN environments you may have. They're going in between the different storage environments that you may have, and multiple locations. 
Um, so when we look at this, uh, let's stay on prem here. We have your files, shares, and archives. Um, you've got virtual machines. Um, you've got, and I'm just kind of moving my notes around. We've got virtual machines. You may have SharePoint. You may have SQL. So it's all on-prem. And being a school system, you may have multiple data centers. Uh, you know, a lot of school systems use their high schools as data centers, or you may have a centralized location and maybe using one of the schools as your DR. So locally, again, you have all these technologies in place. Um, but when we look at Store Simple using um, local and cloud-based, now you can move those workloads, and you have another layer that you've never had before. So that layer um, is really that cloud layer, and it's you know I I look at it as more of an archive layer as well. So from a file share perspective, I can move my files around, active or cold. Some of my files are going to go up to Azure. Um, that's where I'm really saving money. Uh, so I'm able to control my growth locally. So even if, you know, you're looking at 40% growth this year, you don't have to worry about it so much because remember, out of that 40%, um, overall, maybe about 5% is going to stay active all the time. So now you can actually move that growth up into the cloud. Um, the cloud is there for you, or at least half that, that 20% can move up to the cloud. The other 20 can stay in your store simple device as a, as a cold layer. So you have three layers of options, really, uh, and you have continuous growth in the cloud that's going to save you money, at least the capital expenditure portion of it. So the archive portion goes up in the cloud. Virtual machines, we're going we're gonna to talk about. Um, multiple store simple devices and how you can move virtual machines around. But virtual machines can also go up into the cloud as well. Um, from a disaster recovery standpoint, it's fantastic because now you have, again, multiple layers of disaster recovery. You have what's being held within store simple. You've got, if you have a second store simple device in another location, that's going to be deduping and replicating data and VMs and other workloads that you may have uh, into that second device. And again, those both those devices are being managed and sending data up into the cloud. So you've got local applications, on-premise applications that can be replicated to another location, and they can also be replicated up into the cloud. Um, you also have cloud applications. So there's that's the other really great part about the cloud. If, if you've got a tenant, if you're already using Azure, if you're using all 365, let's say you're using, you want to move a, um, a SQL replication up into um, Azure, um, that now becomes a cloud application, um, and it can grow and be that disaster recovery solution for you. So you have multiple layers. You have an on-premise layer. You have a disaster recovery location layer. You also have that cloud layer that can act as um, uh, another option in relation to your VMs uh, and your applications. So your applications can run locally or they can run in, in the cloud as well. So that's that's another layer of disaster recovery. So I'm hoping a lot of you are already um, Azure customers or O365 uh, and using a lot of um, a lot of those solutions already. But adding Store Simple in the mix gives you um, that on-prem solution of hot and cold data, hot and cold workloads, and then also the option of disaster recovery. Um, the management also is centralized, so you can actually get into your Store Simple Manager, and we're, I've got some snapshots of those in one of the later um, in the later slides, so we'll take a look at that. But it's pretty easy to make changes to backup uh, and make changes to um, some of your configurations. Uh, so we're simplifying offsite data protection. So in this instance, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you have at least uh, one data center, if not two, um, with two store simple devices. In this instance, we can actually replicate data from one location to another. So if you have VMs right now and you're doing that type of deduping or that type of replication, um, you can do it with store simple as well. Uh, the added protection here is that you have store simple virtual appliances that you can also um, bring into the mix, and that's completely in the cloud. Um, those VMs can now be replicated within that environment. 
those workloads can be replicated within that environment so you have that extra layer of disaster recovery. So what does that mean for you? That really means that if your, your on-prem devices um, basically go out of sync uh, or you know, your data centers go down, um, you have that virtual appliance, you have that virtual option in the cloud. So those workloads now can remain live, you can bring them back online. And from a disaster recovery standpoint, it's a fantastic thing to look at. Let me see if I have anything else here I wanted to talk about. Um, let's go into the next slide. This is, I love this slide. Um, so when I look at this slide, when we look at it, let's look at it realistically. So when we look at efficient disaster recovery, uh, you know, again, if we were sitting in a room and I said, how many of you have a disaster recovery plan? Probably a lot of you wouldn't. So what's in a disaster recovery plan? You've got, you know, how you're going to do things, how you're going to communicate, how, you know, which um, uh, applications and devices you're going to bring back online first, um, and how long this is going to take. So when we look at your standard disaster recovery scenario, if you're on tape, if your tape's off-site um, and you need to bring it back, that's you know, obviously you've got a vendor that has to bring it back for you. If you have it on site, it's going to take longer because tape is slow. Um, if you've got a store simple device local, especially if you have that second DR plan, a lot of these workloads will come back online live. Um, if you have your virtual device in the cloud, you can bring a lot of these workloads back online live. So the disaster recovery time uh, of bringing a lot of the workloads back is reduced tremendously. Now, a lot of you say, well, okay, well, I'm really dependent on that, my internet connectivity, my internet connection. And that's correct, but with a store simple device, if you have a second data, data uh, recovery area, locally that on-prem device is running at the same speed as your local network. And, and uh, you know, most of us are at least 100 meg, if not a gig, uh, the new store simple devices uh, have gone from one gig to 10 gig. So that connection speed is actually there. So when we look at recovery time, um, again, store simple with cloud options, you could be back online within minutes or a few hours. Uh, depends on the application and the VM that you're bringing back online. Um, if you're looking at tape, you're looking at days, obviously, especially if you have a tremendous amount of data that you need to be back online. And with regular cloud backup, because you're kind of limited to your internet connectivity, if you're just recovering data, just raw data, that's going to take time as well. So the source, Store Simple gives you um, a disaster recovery plan and a disaster recovery option that's incredibly fast. And again, the cost is low. Okay, so we have independent volume sizes that you can do DR with or backup. Uh, whether locally or up in the cloud, and then rapid recovery, um, rapid testing. That's all built onto the product. So the 8000 series is probably the one that you're going to see the most. Um, you've got 8100 and 8600. So uh, the 8100 uh, is, is limited to 15 to 40 terabytes of local space with 200 terabytes of cloud. Um, the 8600 is uh, 40 to 100 terabytes local. Um, 500 terabytes uh, in the cloud. So um, again, when we when we look at this, it's uh, you know it's a storage scenario. It's SSD, two layers of SSD, one layer of, of HDD compressed. So consolidated, it's completely accessed via Azure, and we'll take a look at the setup later on. So here's a unique solution from Microsoft. Um, it connects to Windows, it connects to Linux, it connects to VMware. This is an iSCSI connection. So all your iSCSI configurations are in all three products. Um, it doesn't support MPIO, uh, but then if you look at it, I, there's really no reason for you to do MPIO with Store Simple. Um, so in minutes, you can basically connect it. So and we'll take a look at the setup later on. Um, it's IP, it's the iSCSI configuration on both ends, uh, and then, you know, configuring your volumes. Um, once your volumes are configured, it's uh, going up into the cloud, into your manager, and configuring your policies and your backup. 
So it's it's you're up and running very quickly. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, it really depends on the complexity of your data center, but even if your data center is pretty complex, it's it's simple to set up. Uh, so we've got enterprise SAN storage, inline deduping, that's in between the two SSD layers. We've got compression in the HDD layer, uh, automatic tiering, obviously, so active data stays in the first tier. Um, uh, kind of semi-active data goes into the deduping area, and then as it gets cold, it ends up in HDD and also into the cloud. So if it's really cold and cold and you haven't accessed it in you know in a month or so, then you can archive it up to the cloud. And again, I'm going to remind you: once you want that that file back or that data back, it goes back into that active layer, and then goes in you know basically goes in line with uh, the rest of the data. So as you use it less within that time period, it goes back into succession. Um, automated offsite data protection using cloud snapshots. So again, that's that. Um, that uh, virtual appliance option up in the cloud. Uh, you also could have a second data center with that uh, snapshot option in it as well. Highly efficient, local independent disaster recovery. Um, so it's just, uh, and it really works, it really does, and it's fast. So we can access um, Azure and enterprise data with store simple virtual appliance. Um, uh, we have consolidated storage and data management. So again, using that extra virtual appliance in the cloud adds another layer of disaster recovery. And again, it's decreasing the costs overall. So we have increased IT agility to meet business opportunities, on-demand storage with your on-premise device. So there's no need for uh, planning and worrying about running out of capacity. Um, you know, again, 10%, five to 10% of the data is being used all the time. and Probably another 25% you can access within 30 to 60 days. The rest it will be up in the cloud. And as you grow, um, that cloud portion can grow with you. Consolidated management, so it's one management area. You go into your uh, your store simple manager, and I'll show you a snapshot of that later on. Um, and it's pretty easy to configure and pretty easy to monitor. And on-demand infrastructure, so if you need more space up in the cloud, um, if you need to move data around, you have that option. So what's new when uh, Store Simple first came out? Um, it was limited to one gig. So the connectivity, that was kind of the complaint that, that a lot of people had is why is it only a one gig connection? So now there's a 10 gig connection. You can expand the workload so they are expandable. So if you need another 8600, you can pop in another 8600. Um, and then you have more uh, integrated Azure-based functionality. So now the the Azure Store Simple Manager is actually easier to use, and you can centrally manage all your virtual and your on-prem Store Simple devices and policies uh, in one location. Um, and obviously, the Store Simple Virtual Appliance, the 1100 in the cloud, is available. So here's some of the model numbers, and we went through this a little bit. The 8100 is at 15 terabytes. The 8600 is at 80, uh, 40 terabytes. Remember, when you look at this, don't just look at don't look at it like your traditional storage um, appliance. Uh, remember. Um, Year, a lot of this data can be up in the cloud, and that's going to save you money. So, uh, if you've got, you know, 20 terabytes of total space, uh, that that 8100 may fit the bill for you because again, you're talking active and cold data, and then the rest goes up into the cloud. So, um, that 15 terabytes may allow you more growth than you think. Uh, usable SSD capacity. These are the two layers of SSD we talked about. The 8100 has 800 gig of active data. So again, this is the, the data that's constantly being pulled in and used by your users. And there's two terabytes on the 8600. Um, local capacity is 8100 has 75 terabytes max, and the 8600 has 200 terabytes. I don't know from an um, education perspective if you have that much, but um, that's a lot of data that's available. And then in the cloud, you've got 200 terabytes for the 8100. 500 terabytes for the 8600, so that's a ton of growth. 
Uh, and remember, you're saving 40 to 60 percent in relation to CapEx versus OpEx by going to the cloud with that archive area, that cold storage. So, and also the VM snapshot op options, um, you're going to be saving a lot of money by going by using the cloud for those options. And again, the biggest thing, disaster recovery is there and growth is, you know, limitless. So if you're running out of space, you can make some configuration changes in, in your store simple and get more archive data up in the cloud. Network interface cards, uh, two 10 gig and four uh, one gig connections, and I've got some snapshots of the back of the uh, the product in um, the setup area of this demonstration. So we'll take a look at that. And uh, it's a one U or a one times two U or two times two U um, 8600, and again they're stackable too. So it's not going to take up a lot of floor space basically. Um, the 1100, this is the virtual appliance up in the cloud. 30 terabytes, um, it's just Azure uh, Blob um, storage, uh, and it connects to VMs via a virtual network. So there's no MPIO again in Azure, uh, but if you've got a point-to-point -point, um, configuration with your tenant, then uh, that's going to speed things up for you, and you'll be able to use that snapshot portion for the virtual appliance. So let's summarize. You're going to save a lot of money. Um, I just did a, a cost comparison for a client, and uh, there were about a uh, thousand users. They had, uh, I think, probably about five to ten terabytes, and they were looking at savings of sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year um, just by using this model. Um, and they would have removed a lot of old data, and uh, sorry, a lot of old equipment that that they had due for um, replacement. So if you're looking at that five-year or, or five to eight-year um, cost of storage replacement, this is going to save you a lot of money. Uh, primary storage with automated data protection and high-efficiency disaster recovery. Again, if you don't have a, a really good disaster recovery plan, this is actually putting it in place for you. It's simplifying it for you and allowing you uh, another layer of disaster recovery that you didn't have before, and that's that cloud layer. Um, Pivot from infrastructure management to innovation. So really that the infrastructure management is now centralized um, and uh, it's centralized where both on-prem and virtual uh, management is in one layer. So um, let's take a look at it from the back. Uh, you'll see that you've got multiple controllers. You've got full redundancy just like you do in a lot of your storage appliances today. Um, multiple power supplies multiple management um, connectivity. You've got multiple uh, data connections. Remember, those are 10 gig now. Um, uh, full MPIOs for the on-prem. Remember, the off-prem doesn't support MPIO. Dual controllers with failover, dual fans, dual power supplies. So, um, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go there yet. Uh, RAID drives, hot spares, um, non-disruptive software upgrades. So if you need to upgrade it, it's not going to be disruptive. So it's one controller, a second controller. One controller takes over for the other, that type of thing. And uh, again, it supports uh, Windows and VMware and Linux. So, um, you know, it, it's a simple configuration, IP, um, simple administration so from when you first get it and you rack and stack it you go into the command portion over the management portion of it give it an IP address set your password and uh, um, uh, your administrative configurations and then you're good to go from there you can go up and register it um, you can go up and register the product. Actually, it's on this slide. Uh, but you can go up and start con doing a quick create, a quick configuration up in the Store Simple Manager. Um, register your device, which is pretty simple. And uh, actually, I'm going to go back to the slide. So after you register your device, you can see at the top we've got a main dashboard, a monitor, so you can monitor your devices. If you've got a local on-prem or you've got multiple on-prem, uh, and uh, you also have your virtual, then you can monitor them from here. 
uh, configure your volume containers, your backup policies, and your maintenance. So let's kind of look at a few of those. Uh, the top part, you can see your devices listed, so you can see whether they're online or not. So if you're having any connectivity issues or um, if you're doing any maintenance on the product, whatever, um, you can actually see whether it's online or offline. Um, store simple, your jobs, so you can take a look at your backup jobs. So, yeah, you can do full backup with it. And um, here's your backup policies, so you can actually take a look at each individual device. Each individual device would have its uh, backup policies uh, and uh, also its backup configuration, so you can actually set that per. And down here you can see actually you can actually add or take a backup. So if you want to take a, take one right now, you can. It's it's very simple to use. Uh, it's not beyond you. So uh, that's the um, that's the end of the portion for me. Um, I want to thank everyone for uh, dialing in. Um, take the store simple portion, uh, the store simple option seriously. It's going to save you a lot of money. That's a great product. It's been well proven, well tested, and we've got it out there uh, with a lot of our clients, and they're finding the benefits for it. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, John, and thank you, Steve. We do have a couple questions for the audience. The first question. Uh, had, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Please Rob, go right ahead. I'm sorry. I just had to finish the, the slide deck. Is that okay if we do that before we get oh, to the Q&A? I apologize. I thought Steve was wrapping. Please go right ahead. Um, so – so I'm back. This is Steve, and uh, I, I had a couple of things I wanted to cover real quick. One was a quick client case study. People are always asking for, um, you know, relevant information, so we try to sanitize some great case studies for you guys. Um, we had a, uh, um, a regional board for a, a major religious organization who was uh, looking to update their network storage infrastructure, had some antiquated storage um, that was going out of date and uh, was becoming expensive, spindle storage. Um, but had a you know, limited budget and wanted to take advantage of the current technologies that existed in, you know, tiering their storage and being able to take advantage of potentially off-site off -site tiered storage for that uh, tertiary level of storage into the cloud potentially. Um, and uh, this, this option here totally gave them the capability of being able to step into a cloud environment in a hybrid, in a hybrid way while giving them a fully featured storage solution. Um, and providing them with the capability of being able to utilize that third level of storage or that tiered storage approach um, and take advantage of the economies of scale that exist in a cloud-based storage area in Azure. Um, so they, they were, they were you know, obviously they gained an unlimited storage scalability, um, much better disaster recovery than they probably could have uh, afforded to have done themselves um, and, and by, by leveraging the Azure cloud um, and utilizing the store simple solution and uh, saved, you know, a lot of money, $30,000 in storage costs in the first year alone. And, uh, you know, when you start taking into consideration some of the costs of, of antiquated storage and administration and heating and cooling and floor space and uh, having to do disaster recovery, and you start looking at the capabilities of being able to leverage a store, sim store simple solution coupled with Azure um, and the economies of scale that provides to you, it's pretty quick for you to be able to see how you can start saving significant dollars. Um, a uh, great, uh, you know, like what I typically call that NASCAR slide representation of customers uh, using the the Store Simple solution. Um, it is a well-proven enterprise storage solution. Um, lots of great trademarks on here that you you probably recognize of people who are currently using this solution in their environment. And I, I'm not going to pause here too long, Robin. Uh, this deck is made available to the participants. I can make it available, certainly. I just I, I won't I won't spend too much time on the on the deck. Um, the uh, so uh, just a real quick summary on Dyne Tech and and who we are again from an accolades perspective. I mentioned earlier, you know, we've been in business for over 25 years. Um, we we've uh, we, we're a national company, publicly traded company. Um, we were Microsoft's public sector worldwide education partner of the year in 2013. Um, we received the Microsoft General Manager Award um, several times. We, we are uh, Intel Security, formerly McAfee, um, Government Health and Education Partner of the Year for five years in a row. So, um, again, showing our strength uh, of, and our brand uh, and what we're able to be able to do from a technology perspective. But not only that, 
Um, you'll see some other great accolades in here. Cisco's customer satisfaction gold star, 18 quarters in a row. I think that actually that number is actually higher now. This may be a, that number may be a little old. Um, Citrix's top mobility deal in 2014, and CRN's fastest growing and solution provider uh, in the top 500, and the, and the fastest growth in 150. So th those are all great things, and and, and you know, everybody's got their great accolades. But I always try to let people know that the real real money behind the information you're reading on that screen there has nothing to do with those accolades. It has everything to do with the architect level customer facing people we have within our company. You know, here we are, this small company, sub 300 employees, $170 million a year, and we're competing for accolades from major corporations like Microsoft and Cisco and Intel and McAfee and um, all of these Citrix and all these wonderful accolades that we have that we can hang our, our, our hat on. And those are really um, due to the people that, like John and his colleagues that you've met here who are all very, very, very high-level, architect-level customer-facing engineers that we provide to our customers. And that's why all these companies, Microsoft comes to us and we work with them to try to help um, you know, provide solutions to their customers hand-in-hand -hand with them because we've got that, that high-level technical capability. Um, so I promised you an offer, and I wanted to just kind of run through this here real quick for you guys. This is a great offer that we're providing to um, the seminars that, that we're giving as a, uh, a a, um, a, a kind of a giveaway for you guys, and, and I hate to use that term giveaway, but it's a complimentary assessment, something we normally do not do complimentary. Um, it is an, a cloud readiness assessment, and, and this is something that really is very special when it comes to being able to identify where your cloud business is going and where you want to go, because we, we do this not only from a technical perspective, we don't only go in and, and measure your bandwidth and help you guys understand what your environment looks like and assess your environment for cloud readiness move and try to understand where you're able to do that, but we also sit down and understand the business drivers for why you might want to move to the cloud. What are those impetus points in your environment where you say, here's an inflection point in my environment where I can take a look at this. My, my, maybe my, my, the, the end of life for my disaster recovery site is coming and that gives me an opportunity to try to take a look at moving moving into a cloud-based environment for my disaster recovery and taking advantage of compute on demand and some of the other capabilities that a cloud-based environment might give me. And that's the kind of interview, I call it a psychological interview process that our architects go through to really understand not only what's your technical ability to be able to, your technical tolerance for being able to move to the cloud, but, but really what is your business tolerance for being able to move to the cloud? as well as understanding, and this is always very important, I try to point out this is a very big important, of our, important part of our assessments, is, uh, is understanding um, what, what is the, where can we find successful wins that will increase adoption and increase the brand of the people who are trying to drive this within your environment. Because what's really important is not only being able to get that ROI and, be, and being able to be successful in the, in the deployment, but being able to get user adoption. So when you start thinking about being able to do things in the cloud and you, you talk about moving productivity suites or email or, or your backup or your storage into the, into the cloud, um, it's, it's a very important thing for you to be able to get you know, rapid user adoption for whatever that user group is that's gonna be taking advantage of that because once they identify with the success and the capabilities that they're going to experience within the cloud, that's gonna take off for you and it's gonna proliferate in your environment kind of, I mean, for lack of a better term, kind of like a virus, right? Uh, it's gonna it's going to really explode in your environment and, and you'll see a much more rapid adoption of your cloud theory uh, behind that. So that's what we always look for is where is it going to be a quick adoption rate for you that's gonna give you that quick and early success and quick win for you to be able to look like the hero in your environment. So this is a great free cloud readiness assessment that we provide to you. Happy to provide uh, any information you're looking for about talking about this and, uh, and, and provide you with any further information you would like to discuss. It, it covers much more than what we've covered today. So it's gonna talk about email and communications and mobility and database capabilities and systems management, uh, storage, disaster recovery, business continuity, business productivity. We're gonna look at your entire environment for its opportunity to, to you know, to really look at a, a cloud readiness scenario. So uh, I think I just wanna say thank you again um, before we turn it over to Q&A. Um, John, great job as usual. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a really great time to really be considering these options as you look forward to, to, 
to the, the cost and the economies of scale that are available for cloud-based solutions, when you couple that with the Store Simple solution, really, really become a very, very uh, impactful conversation, not only to changing expense from capital expense, um, but also being able to give you guys the capability of, of taking advantage of uh, a, a business opportunity that you probably, in many instances, enterprise-wide, can't really afford to take advantage of that kind of investment that Microsoft has made. So with that, Robin, I'm going to turn it back over to you for questions, and thanks for letting me finish up, John. Great job, and thank you, everybody, again, for, uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. So my first question, can you get Store Simple as software and we use our own hardware? Uh, that is, that's a good question. The answer is no. <laughs> Store Simple is an appliance. Um, uh, obviously, the virtual portion of it is up in the cloud. It's available for you, but I don't believe that you can get the software and put it on your SAN. Um, you know, this is a pre-configured uh, piece of hardware, so I don't believe that that's, that's an option. Thank you. I have another question. Can we use Store Simple as a file server? If so, can we expose it as a as a domain named based DFS share? Um, if you're using a, a VM or a, that's connected via iSCSI, uh, yes, yes, you can. Okay. I have another question. How many SSD layers are there? There's two. There's two SSD layers. One is the active layer. The other one's the dedupe. Okay. I actually do have a few more. As a reminder to our audience, if you'd like to put your questions in, simply click on the Messages button in the bottom left. Next question. How vast does it replicate VMs? Uh, well, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a 10 gig connection, so if, you know, it really depends on where the VMs are, and it really depends on the, the speed of your network. Um, so, I mean, if you look at it, even if it's doing half speed at 5 gig, it's pretty fast. Um, if you're doing it up into the cloud, it really depends on your connectivity. So that's where you get the slowness. But um, if you're doing multiple data centers, it's just your connection. But you're going to be limited by the connection of your uh, of those data centers. So if you've got a one gig line between the two, then that's what you'll be replicating at. All right, I have another one. If a document ends up cold in the cloud and the user starts to use the document again, does it stay in the cloud? No, it moves into one of your active layers, one of your SSD layers. So it goes back into um, the hot area and then goes through its uh, your policies in relation to how it's being used. Okay, I have a couple more. Robin, Robin can I just yeah. expand on that answer real quick? Please. For, for those of you that for those of you that have looked at storage from from a, you know legacy on-prem storage providers, you start looking at some of the solutions from NetApp and EMC and Compellent and HP's 3PAR solution, they all have this tiered storage solution capability where they drop the inactive storage down into that third level of storage. This is a very similar situation, but providing you with true economy and true capability with, while being able to offload that, that inactive storage layer into that cloud-based scenario. And a perfect example of this, of a real successful uh, scene like this, is when you start to think about static storage like video surveillance or uh, video visitation or some sur some type of storage that becomes stagnant in its usage but only get, needs to be reclaimed. It needs to be stored for long periods of times, long periods of time but only needs to be reclaimed during active usage or search times. That's This is a, a driving use for this kind of a storage scenario where you start talking about tiered storage into the cloud. Because remember, again, you're talking about pennies on the dollar in comparison to spindle storage on your floor when you think about cloud-based storage. So that, that's a really impacted, great question. It's a really impactful answer. Okay, I have another one. Um, so how is this different from than the SAN I have right now? Well, I don't know which SAN that you have right now, but if you have just a standard SAN, you probably don't have the intelligence be, uh, that Store Simple that has. Um, so you don't have multiple SSD layers and a compressed HDD layer. If you've got a compound or any of the other ones that Steve mentioned, then it's similar, but they don't have that cloud integration. Um, so um, it's very different from what you, you currently have. Okay, I have one more question, and again, our, to our audience, if you'd like to ask a question, use the Messages button. The last question I have so far is, 
Is the HDD layer compressed? Yes, it is. Uh, it's completely compressed, um, and, uh, um, and so is the data stream going up to your 1100 device in, in the virtual cloud environment as well. All right, that's all and the yes, questions it's, I have. And yes, it's secure, in case anyone has that. It's completely secure. I have no more questions at this time. Okay. Steve, uh, I don't know if you have any closing comments. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out again and, and joining us. Um, again, take the product seriously. Uh, it's a great product. It's going to save you a lot of money, and uh, a lot of our clients are very happy with it. If you have any more questions, uh, we're available. Um, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to answer any more of your technical questions. Yeah, no, John, great great job again. Thank you, everybody, for, for showing up. And uh, and uh, I'd like to figure out a way so that we don't end up on this, this slide here that shows that goofy picture of me. But other than that, I, I really appreciate everybody coming out today and uh, joining us and hope you learned something. And, again, if, you, if you're if you interested in the assessment, please feel free to follow up. I'm sure that uh, there's a, a bunch of contact information in there. You can reach out to any one of us, and we'll, you know, we'll get you back to the right spot and make sure that you get whatever you need to be able to get that done. It's a great offer you might want to take advantage of and consider seriously. And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, John. And thank you, Sheila. As mentioned, we will get that PowerPoint deck with the content that we covered today emailed out to each registrant in today's session. And this does conclude the audio portion of our event. You may now disconnect. <laughs>